And so my point here being is that when you're still young, when you're in your 20s and 30s, and maybe even 40s, there's something to be said to investing that time on tackling materialistic desires that you have. Try to get that out of your system as early as possible. I see that some of you who are following me are sort of taking the opposite approach, which is what you're doing is you're sort of like neglecting all the material aspects and you're just going straight to psychedelics and straight to meditation and self-inquiry and yoga and non-duality. And you're still maybe only 20 years old or 25 years old or 30 years old. And I think that this is dangerous. Now, for some of you, it's, it's right. And if it works for you, it clicks for you, great, do it. But for others of you who are trying to do this and you're seeing that it's failing, you're not getting the results you want, I would suggest that maybe you need to rethink your strategy and that really you got to get honest with yourself about your materialistic cravings and desires and needs and really focus on those first. Focus on those for 5, 10, 15 years. Satisfy those, you know, build a business, do your art, develop your career, um, handle your finances, move away from your family so that you're independent, you're not under their, um, you know, under their heel. Um, have the romantic and sexual relationships you want, develop the friendships you want, go socialize, go party, go have fun, do this sort of stuff, get it out of your system. And then maybe when you're older, now once you get that stuff out of your system, then there will come a natural place in your life where you say, well, I've done this and I've done that, I've traveled, I've ate great food, I've made good money, I've had some fame, I've had some success and this sort of stuff. And okay, I've done that stuff, it's great, fine, but now I want something more. And then I think that's really when your spiritual work will uh, produce the most fruits. And in a certain sense, to, to pursue awakening and spirituality too early in your life is, in a certain sense, doing things backwards. Now, again, for some people, it's, it's appropriate, but for most people, I think it's backwards, actually. Because there is that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and self-transcendence is at the very top of the hierarchy for a good reason. So you want to satisfy your lower needs first for most people. Now, again... This doesn't mean you have to do it this way. It just means for most people, this is probably their karma and what they need to do is, you know, burn through a good amount of it in their 20s and 30s before they can get really serious about spiritual work. Now, you might wonder, well, but Leo, um, what makes the difference? How about, you know, some people who pursue like sex or luxury or travel or money it seems like some people, maybe even most people, pursue that stuff and they get stuck in it, they get lost in it, and they end up chasing money or sex or whatever like for their entire lives. It doesn't seem like they exhaust it. What's the difference between a person who pursues sex and has sex for five or 10 years, gets a lot of it out of his system and then moves on to other things versus a person who becomes a sex addict and just has sex chasing women endlessly, you know, philandering endlessly for the rest of his life. What's the difference between those two? How do we avoid this second situation? How do we actually make sure that when we're pursuing and satisfying our desires, that they're actually getting satisfied and then transcended rather than just an endless pursuit of the same thing over and over and over again. Like some people, you know, some, some millionaires and billionaires, they just pursue more and more money. There's, uh, they're like 80, 90 years old and they're still just chasing money. Every day they're waking up thinking about how to make more money. But what's the point of all that money? You're going to be dead in five years. You don't need any more billions of dollars. You already got more than you can spend. What are you doing? So this is, this is a question I've been pondering. It's a deep question. I, I, I recommend you contemplate it too because I, I honestly, I don't know exactly the answer, but here I'll speculate a little bit with you. Um, I think that, <clears throat> I think that honestly, some people are just so dense in their consciousness and they have so much karma, so to speak, to burn through that in this lifetime, they're not going to burn through much of it. They're going to get stuck with sex, money, or whatever. I think that another important factor is that mm, these people just don't, a lot of people simply don't have the theoretical foundation to know about the possibilities 
of even transcending these desires and what what greater things lie beyond, right? So if you've been following Actualize.org and you've been studying my content, then you're in a rather unique situation because I've talked a lot about the limitations of materialistic pursuits. And, uh, you know, if you've contemplated this stuff, you should, and you introspected, you should notice how your chasing and pursuing of materialistic things never really fully satisfies you. And so as you apply consciousness to the fact that your selfish actions and your limited ways of pleasuring yourself, um, as you become more conscious, you, you realize that, that the, these things, they, 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 they don't lead to the greatest satisfaction. And then you listen to me and I talk about things that are sort of higher forms of satisfaction, like spiritual satisfaction that you might get. Or if you've done psychedelics, you've experienced the kind of love, profound love and sense of completeness uh, that you get on a psychedelic journey. Um, and, and that just that, that that puts your ordinary materialistic pursuits into into a context, into their place. It shows you how petty they are, right? But I think that for 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 most people who are out there pursuing materialistic things, mm, they're roughly at spiral dynamic stage orange. They don't even know of the higher stages. They don't even know about green or yellow or turquoise. They don't know about transcending the ego. They don't know about spiritual ecstasy and bliss. Right? They don't know about love. They don't know about God. They don't know about these things. They're not even in that person's mind. Like, you know, take someone like like Warren Buffett. I don't know. I, I really don't know much about his psychology or what he knows or doesn't know, but I just picture him as somebody who just like materialistically pursues more and more money for its own sake. I don't know how this makes him happy, but appara apparently it does somehow. Um, I don't know why he's like 80 years old now and he's still not sick of pursuing money and just investing more and more. I would think he would have exhausted that by now, um, but apparently he hasn't. And why is that? Probably because he doesn't know that there's higher things because he's so stuck on just that one thing. Also, I think that people who are very, very good and talented in a narrow capacity at one thing, they can easily get stuck in that thing. So for example, if you're really, really good at investing, you can easily get stuck 80 years of your life just investing, 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 because that's all you know, that's, that's what you're best at, and you don't want to explore any other aspects of life, really, because you wouldn't be very good at them as you are at investing. Or if you're like, if you're really good with women, I know some guys like this who are just like players, like they're just naturally really good with women. They always were. And so for them, having lots of sex just comes very naturally and, and effortlessly. They're really good at it. It gives them a certain amount of pleasure. Of course, it never fully satisfies them. So they have to have more and more and more hundreds of women. And then they just keep doing this into their 40s and 50s and maybe their whole life they will just be doing this. Um, and uh, that just might be because that that's the like the easiest path for them. That's what they're really good at. And then for them to do something else to find other higher pleasures, this might be, um, you know, this might be very much out of their comfort zone, not something they're talented or or, or gifted in. And they would have to work really hard at it, and it would be painful. And so they don't do it. They don't go in that direction. I think that also people with a lot of trauma early trauma, um, that trauma can, can sort of twist and distort your psyche and get you stuck in certain ways and then keep you stuck there in those patterns for the rest of your life un unless you go and deeply heal that trauma and address it. And of course, that trauma usually is very difficult to heal. It's painful. People don't want to look at it. It's buried deep in the psyche. And so I think a lot of trauma contributes to people getting stuck. Um, and that would require, you know, years of therapy, years of psychedelic work, years of introspection. And, and for many people, it's easier just to avoid that and just to, you know, to focus on the, the simpler pleasures of life as sort of a coping mechanism against that. Um, but what I would say is that if you pursue the satisfying of some of your deepest desires, some of your genuine desires with an attitude of mindfulness and consciousness and you put it in the proper context and also at the same time you're studying spiritual theory and you're building this deep foundation that we build here with, 
with actualized content, and maybe you're exploring a little bit of psychedelics and you're still meditating a little bit, these sorts of things. Um, and you, you understand that the pursuit of these desires is going to be a temporary thing. You're not like, you're not fooling yourself into thinking that you're going to be keep doing this for the rest of your life. In fact, you might sort of set like a rule for yourself, like, okay, you know, I'm going to pursue business for the next five or 10 years. I'm going to exhaust that. I'm going to pursue money or fame for the next five or 10 years. I'm going to exhaust that. I'm going to pursue sex and relationships for the next five or 10 years. And I'm going to exhaust that craving. And then I'm going to move on to higher things.